It is time now for Kara's Cures, and this one hits close to home because you might recall I recently lost my voice over the summer, and it turns out it was because I had a nodule. And you're not alone. Many teachers also strain their voices, but there is help. Dr. Helen Wang is here to talk about what to do to save your voice, and she specializes in voice and swallowing disorders. And, Doctor, thank you for being here. I know you help me a lot, so I appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. No, it's our pleasure. All right, I, I, I actually had nodules back in 2002. And you had to have surgery. I had to have surgery on my nodules. But uh, when Kara started sounding like me, I said, you better go get this checked out. And thank God she checked it out with you. Well, I've been speaking that way for like months. I mean, do you find that some people just don't realize they need to get help? Well, sometimes, especially with nodules and people who use their voice extensively, it can be this very slowly worsening process that they might not notice is happening until they're they're very significantly hoarse. How do nodules form? I mean, what, what's the cause of them? Yeah, so I like to explain it um, with this analogy of like when kids are playing on the monkey bars and they get these calluses on their hands. Okay. Um, it's very similar when people either overuse their voice or they misuse their voice, that part of your vocal cord that hits each other the hardest form these little calluses and then they affect the way that your vocal cords can close. So instead of two nice straight edges touching each other, you have a little bump that keeps the vocal cords from closing correctly and affects the way they vibrate. And that's what causes the hoarse voice. So I've learned a lot from you and talk about a little bit about vocal hygiene. I was doing a lot of things wrong. So aside from when you're acutely hoarse, limiting, overusing your voice or misusing it, such as yelling or screaming, um, it's really important to make sure that you stay well hydrated. I usually recommend at least 68 glasses of water, and you want to minimize things that will dehydrate you, like caffeine and alcohol. Now, is it uh, from a one episode time that you can get a nodule, or it's repeated use and that kind of builds up over time? So the good news is it's typically repeated use. Vocal fold nodules tend to be in people who chronically overuse or misuse their voice. And so that would be TV and radio people, but it's also teachers. You say yeah. you get a lot of teachers who come to you and they don't know why their voice is so hoarse. So if the teachers about this time of year are noticing something, they might need to get checked out, right? Definitely. Um, fall time, I see a lot of teachers who say, you know, my voice is great during the summer. But every fall, I get this laryngitis that just doesn't go away until, you know, Thanksgiving or winter break. Um, and that oftentimes is because once they go back to school, they have to use their voice more than they typically do. Is, is there, you know, should we, if we see these symptoms, other than seeing you, should we drink hot tea, cold tea? Is there something that, is there a remedy out there? Or no, it needs more intense therapy. Well, so hoarseness is very common. Um, a third of people will develop hoarseness at some point in their lives. It commonly is luckily self-limited, meaning it lasts less than a few weeks. It's when it's lasting for more than three to four weeks, or you notice that it's chronically getting worse, or if you have other health issues to consider, um, such as you know, if you smoke, then you should have that evaluated sooner rather than later. So. There's something called laryngeal reflux that I learned from you. Uh, mm -hmm. And, I, you know, you guys, it's great when you go there. They put a camera down. They can see everything. So it gets proven to you. If you don't have, you think reflux, heartburn, that kind of thing. If it's affecting your voice, it's a different kind of reflux, right? Right. So it's what we call silent reflux, um, meaning it's not truly silent. You just don't have the classic heartburn, indigestion, burping kind of symptoms. You just have the throat symptoms. And those commonly are hoarseness. Um, feeling of postnasal drainage, chronic throat clearing, and some people will just have this sore throat, throat irritation, um, where they may attribute it to allergies or just feeling run down when really it's a little bit of stomach acid that's coming up into the throat. Hmm. I'm constantly telling Kara to be quiet, but she doesn't <laughs> seem to listen. Is that good advice? <laughs> um, so I usually will tell patients that especially if you're sick, if you've come down with a cold or a sinus infection and you notice that your voice is going, that the best thing to do in that immediate situation is to rest your voice. Okay. All well, right. Thank you. Yes, I was on vocal rest for a while. <laughs> All right, Dr. Work. Wang, we're going to talk about more of this coming up on our streaming app uh, in Kara's Cures, so look for a bigger episode, and you can also see Dr. Wang because she is with ProHealth right here in Connecticut. Thanks for being with us.
All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. There's the same.